Hello and welcome to this week's Emotionally Speaking. I'm Carla McLaren and this week we've got something where the question involves part of the answer. So what this person is asking is about someone who's very critical of others and tries to set boundaries for themselves by shaming and correcting others. Right? So this person knows what's happening with this critical person is they're trying to set boundaries with the boundary setting emotion of anger but they're doing it in such a way that they're actually trying to control other people's behavior, right? So that's both setting boundaries and breaking boundaries. So there's a little problem going on there, right? Now, shaming other people is always boundary breaking, right? Because you are attempting to control their behavior or change their behavior. So this person's critical. This person's, I would say, snappy, very focused, very... Um, um, well, unaccepting of others' flaws, I would say. I wonder how this person feels about their own flaws. <laughs> I'm thinking it's not good. Um, so what in this question, it was the person is setting boundaries for themselves by shaming and correcting others. All right, so what we see is somebody who has difficulty with boundaries. And you would think that you would want to go and set a boundary with them and maybe with some pointing fingers, right? You, you, your anger might come up and, you know, justifiably so. However, because this person is showing that they don't have good boundaries, right? They're coming, they're taking their anger and they're coming out of their boundary and they're coming into yours and they're shaming you, right? That would tell me that their boundaries aren't strong and their healthy shame isn't strong either. So healthy shame sets a boundary for you. Uh, anger sets a boundary uh, from the outside, like, mm, nah, I don't like that situation, or I, I don't want to do it that way, or something like that. It sets a boundary, yeah, I would like just a little bit of ice cream, and that's fine, right? It's a boundary for anything. Shame looks towards you and sets a boundary. So if you're going to say something snarky, your shame would go, really? Because I think that person's had a pretty terrible day. And you'll go, oh yeah, okay. So shame might, you know, silence you when you're about to say something that's not going to be supportive, okay? So this person isn't getting that message from shame. This person is coming out and kind of pouring shame on others. And so what we've got is someone who's very, very fragile, right? It can look strong to be the shaming person, but that's not strength. No, a strong person doesn't need to shame others. So what we know is that this person is boundary impaired and that this person is shame impaired and that this person is anger impaired, right? So there's tremendous amount of boundary issues going on with this person. So how you set boundaries is really important, right? Empathically speaking and emotionally speaking. So what I would tend to do with a person who has this many, this many problems and this much trouble with boundaries is wait until there is nothing up, right? There's, there's no conflicts going on. There's no finger pointing from this person. The person's calm. Maybe it's at a meal. Maybe it's on a walk. Maybe it's on a break, right? And just check in and start to create a relationship in the calm times when the person can think clearly and behave in a, in a more truly workable way. So that you have the, the relationship that you would need to talk about the problem when it occurs, right? Because if you just come at the person when they're doing that behavior, you're gonna break their boundaries even more and I don't know what would happen. Right? They're already showing that they're fragile and that they are not, you know, functioning. Uh, they're not running on all four cylinders, right? They're not managing well. So it's kind of a, we call it stealth empathy. Um, it's kind of, kind of going around the back of the behavior, creating a relationship that can support the relationship. And then when the behavior comes out, then you have the right to speak to it, right? It's a longer process, right? But, but understand, when someone is doing that many behaviors around boundaries, they are severely boundary impaired. 
So anything that you do when they're in that riled up space is really, really going to injure them. And then they'll have more boundary violations. And then that behavior is going to ratchet up, right? So it's a way to find setting boundaries for that person or with that person in a way that isn't going to hurt them, right? And you can also do that by modeling boundaries. You can say, like, modeling healthy shame. You can say out loud, don't be annoying about it, right? Be stealth empathy, right? But say, oh my gosh, I just realized that I am going to be late on this. Oh, I'm so upset with myself. I'm going to be late. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, right? And then show what it is for a person with healthy and functioning shame to feel ashamed of themselves and then move through it, right? A person with very poor boundaries is available to everything in the environment, right? It's a painful situation if you can't control it. So that person will see the modeling that you're doing and it will kind of upload into their psyche. I know this is obviously not a way that you've heard to do this before, but you know, we're talking about emotions and empathy in a different way here. And we're talking about what people's behavior means emotionally speaking. So coming at it like, you're a bad person, you know, you're bothering me, why are you so critical? That sort of thing. It's just going to feed into the behavior and it's also going to feed into that person's pre-existing idea that other people are not safe, right? So if you really want to help make a change in this behavior, you're going to need to be an ally and not just someone who's a stronger bully, right? Remember that People who are strong are never bullies, ever. Bullying comes from weakness. Bullying comes from a shame impairment. Bullying comes from boundary impairment. Bullying comes from emotional impairment. It's not a sign of strength. So don't get into it, right? You don't want to go there. You want to create a situation where boundaries become a normal part of the relationship, a normal part of the situation, so that this person can maybe start to rebuild some healthy boundaries that aren't about poking and, and breaking the boundaries of others. This is, this is my quest. <laughs> but it can work. It can work. People who are angry are usually people who care a lot. They care a great deal. And if you can focus on the care and concern and the, the, the reliance on standards and excellence, then you can engage with people like this and help them find a way to be more socially viable, to be more socially appropriate, and to be just more fun to be around. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.